Hi, I'm David with Best Rest Products. Today we're going to be talking about the Best Rest Universal Tire Repair Kit that will repair both tubed and tubeless tires. We're going to be showing you how to make a tire repair in the field. I'm going to be showing you some tips, some tricks, some techniques. Uh, tire repair is really not that difficult. We make a kit that comes in a hard plastic case. It weighs about 12 ounces. And inside this kit is everything you need to repair both styles of tires. It unscrews. You have four strings for tubeless repair. You have four patches for tube repair. You've got two valve stems and two valve cores. You also have three tools. This is for repairing tube tires. It's a stitching tool or a roller on one end. It's a scuffing tool on the other side to scuff up the rubber. And this will be used if you're making tube repairs. These two tools right here are for tubeless repair. If you're riding a 1200 GS or a tubeless bike, this is what you'll be using. The first is a reamer. This reamer basically clears out the hole that the nail or the other object caused in the tire. This tool is an insertion tool. It's forked in the middle and you fit one of the strings through this little slot and I'll show you how that's going to be done here in a few moments. When we're working in the field, we're not working on a nice clean studio table. If you're working on the ground in the dirt, it's not much fun. So, in the field, I carry our tire changing mat. This is really a 36 by 36 inch Cordura waterproof working area. It'll work uh, in the field to make the repairs on the tire, keep all your tools neat and orderly. It'll also serve as a floor mat in front of your tent when you're camping. Or if you go to a picnic table that's covered with grime, you can lay this out and sit on this and you'll be nice and clean. So we'll be doing the work on top of this mat. But the first thing we have to do is we have to take a tire and we have to make a hole. And here's the nail on the road and here's my tire. You can hear the air coming out. This represents a puncture in the field. We'll reset the camera now and I'll get up close where you can see the actual work I'm going to be doing. Here's that hole that we drilled in the tire from before, right there. This represents the 16 penny nail or the sheetrock screw that you got in your tire. Remember these are the parts that come for making tube repairs. We'll set these aside and we'll set aside the valve caps and cores. What we're going to be working with are these vulcanizing strings, vulcanizing glue, the probe tool, and the insertion tool. Again, this is on a tubeless tire. First thing we need to do is identify the hole, and we find that hole, and we basically work this tool into the tire, twisting and turning, and pushing it in and out. And we want to do this several times. You may want to wear gloves because you can wear the, the skin on your hand. Also, if you're working on a tire that's on a center stand, you have to be careful that you don't push the bike off the center stand. So it's a good idea to run a strap between the center stand and the front wheel of the bike. So we've cleaned or reamed this hole several times and gotten it to the right size. Then, we take one of these vulcanizing strings. These vulcanizing strings use a special type of glue that's proprietary to these strings and patches. You can't use any other glue except this in this kit. You take your insertion tool and you thread that through the center of the tool in that fashion so it's equal distance. Then we take our tube of glue. It's got a small seal on the end and we're going to puncture it with the cap. I'll put a napkin underneath here so that I don't make a mess of my tire changing mat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lubricate this string and the tool itself. I'm going to get them nice and wet with the glue so that it slides in easily. You might want to wear gloves when you're doing this to keep the glue off your fingers. Then I simply take this and push firmly straight into the tire. I use my index as a gauge so I don't push it all the way through until I have perhaps a half an inch sticking 
out of the hole. Then it's simply a matter of pulling the tool straight back out. The string remains in place inside the tire and your repair is essentially done. It's been about three minutes since we put this string into the tire. It's already tacky, the glue is pretty much dried, the vulcanization process is taking place. I should cut these, these ends off so that they're not hanging out too far. So I use a pocket knife and I cut them off about like that. The remaining end of the string will easily wear off on the pavement and in 20 miles you won't even know that the repair has been made. Now understand that any field repair is considered temporary and it's our counsel that you ride no further than 50 miles at 50 miles an hour until you can get to professional help have the tire replaced. That being said, I've ridden tires that have been repaired in this fashion for many thousands of miles, but I took the risk. That's up to you. So I've cleaned off my tool. I'm ready to take my cycle pump, reinflate my tire. By the time I get all my bits and pieces put away, I'm ready to inflate, and I'm back on the road, elapsed time, perhaps five minutes. Now we're going to talk about making a repair on a tubed tire. Here's our tube, and it's got a hole in it. So how do we repair that? It's a different technique than we used for the tubeless tire with the strings. In the case of a tube, we have to scuff up this rubber so that it's nice and rough so that our patch can be adhered to the tire. We're getting rid of any molding compound or anything that would prevent the glue from sticking. I won't spend a lot of time scuffing it, but you get the idea. I'm going to scuff this up using the scuffing tool until this area is, is rough. And I want to make it bigger than the size of the patch. And you see the patch right there. It's two by two. So I might make this a little bit bigger, but I won't bore you on film. Then we take the same vulcanizing glue. Remember, only this glue works with these, with these strings or with these patches. And I put a small amount of glue on there, and I spread it around. Again, you may want to use gloves. I, I don't bother. Spread it around in that fashion, and get a nice even film and then take the patch and peel off the protective blue coating. Now I wait a few minutes until this glue has become tacky and if I look at it I can see that portions of it are still shiny and wet and other portions are tacky so I have to give it a minute. The amount of time it takes for it to get tacky depends upon how hot it is, how much sun, things of that nature. But let's assume that this has all become tacky. My cut is right here. I center my patch over the cut. I push in at the middle and lay it out smoothly like that. And then I take my, my uh, wheel tool and starting from the middle, I just start working that patch outwards towards the edges. Nice and easy. In a, in a sunburst pattern. And then I go over it several more times. And that's pretty much the repair right there. Now troubleshooting, let's say I didn't get glue underneath this corner. If I peel it back gently, put a little glue in there, spread it out, give it a minute, let it uh, become tacky again, I can make that work better. By the time I put my tools away, get this patch, patch tube inside the tire carcass, I'm ready to inflate and we're back on the trail. Thanks for watching.